Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And he's not going anywhere to start the night. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Elvis Doomerville there on the tackle. On second down, here's Locke. Allen's got it over the middle. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolding. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear, but they, they were making a few yards along the way. And now that they've coughed it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And they get 28 yards on that one. And the Ravens are going to have a first and goal. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football, and they've got it here with a first down. Trying to pound it in with Dixon. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Kenneth Dixon taking it in from a yard out. And the Ravens are in for six. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And the possession switches to Indianapolis. Here come the Colts as you look forward for them after three 11 and five campaigns back to back eight and eight seasons missing the playoffs but appears chuck pagano will be the head coach again many thought he might be on the way out he's staying with brand new general manager in place they'll have to work hand in hand together to keep improving the roster but just mentioned the back to back eight and eight seasons in the afc south that only puts them about one game out of the playoffs so if they can make any type of improvement, they have a chance to get back into the playoffs where they were for the previous three seasons. Eight yards still remaining here on third down. Throwing on third down, Luck. And able to find Dorsett. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Frank Gore there. Let's look ahead for a quick minute. We don't have the schedules yet for next year, but what we do have are the five international games that will be played, four in London and then one again in Mexico, Jacksonville, Baltimore, Miami, New Orleans, Cleveland, Minnesota, Rams in Arizona, those in London, and then Mexico's going to get a great game, the Raiders and New England. Yeah, you're exactly right. And just think about the ones in London. Remember, they're splitting them between the two different stadiums yep. in London, so they get a different flavor in all these places. But Mexico, for the second straight year, the Raiders are coming to town. That should be a whole lot of fun. Should be a ton of fun and a very good matchup. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Back to throw. Love. Caught on the right side by Dorsett. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Philip Dorsett as the first half is winding down. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Heavy on the edge, heavy on the edge. 
They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. First and 10 here for Flacco. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. Well, partner, I That answers the question about whether they're going to sit on it or not. <laughs> it does. Now we'll see if they try that again. Yeah, I think what we find on plays like that, when you take that shot, if you're unsuccessful, then you go way more conservative to finish the half, you know? I think that's the way they'll go. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing, and on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. Both the Ravens and Colts haven't had a reliable run game so far. The push up front has not been there, and you have to give credit to both defenses on that front. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Ravens have it at the two. Dixon's going to stay up the middle. And this run goes for a touchdown. Ravens up by a touchdown. First and ten. The catch is made after a quick pass. Jeez. They don't even want to let their guys get a drink of water. All right, third quarter. Let's get to it. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a turn setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What is... And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Steve Smith, 75 yards. And the Ravens have taken the lead. And when a Hail Mary is completed for a touchdown pass like that, I think any defensive coordinator just puts their face right into their hands. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And I don't have stats in front of me. I don't have the empirical numbers that say that in recent years, the Hail Mary pass has been completed more than it has been. But it feels that way, doesn't it? And I know the defenses are spending more time on it. I think the biggest mistake they make is that they play everything from behind the receiver. I think they've got to start getting people in front as well to try and knock the ball away. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Now on second down, this is Gore. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. They'll look to throw, and that is incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. Now fourth down. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Desperation time for Luck on fourth down. And no, it's incomplete. 
They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Ravens are looking like they're going to come away with a victory. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. They have the lead, still a one possession game, but the defense got to stop. They've got the football now, just salted away, right? Exactly. And he's across for the touchdown. And in the final minute, that should just about seal it. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable. But do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you've still got to make sure you stay with it, do all the right things down the center. You've got to feel good about your chances. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. And this kick goes out of bounds, and that's obviously why the flag comes out here. And now you can see the defense greeting the kicker as they go out to play. The starting field position for the offense is excellent, puts a lot more pressure on the defensive guys. Yeah, and if the kicker thinks he's lonesome, he's really lonesome after a play like this. Hey, he better hope that he's lonesome because who's ever standing next to him is probably on the defensive side, and they're none too happy. And they're going to speed things up here. On first down, it's locked. His throw caught at about the five. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Dante Moncrief, 26 yards. And the Colts have got it back to a one-score game. And there's the touchdown that they needed, so they'll celebrate. But the guys on the sidelines, they've got to stay focused. The onside kick team, they need them to get the ball back. Yeah, part one of the equation done. Now they need to convert and then get that onside kick. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. How about this? Flacco setting to throw it. He's going to go up top again. And it's knocked away and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Steve Smith that time. And that takes us from second to third down. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. And that play was what every defense is wary of. The big strike attempted downfield, but they were in excellent position. They didn't get fooled. And while he didn't come up with the interception, was able to bat the ball down. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. They'll run. It's Dixon. Get this up only to about the 33. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And the Colts are going to get the football in outstanding field position. One last throw here for Luck. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over.